so Paddy Casey, um, great to have you on talking to us. Uh, it's an exciting time for, well, not just us, but for the, the music industry in Ireland in general, because gigs are coming back and um, it's great to see you. Are you as excited as we are for, for having them? Well, I'm, I'm, I mean, fingers crossed, yes, I am excited, yes. Uh, I, mean, I can't wait. I mean, I'm a little bit out of practice and I'm a little bit nervous about that, but uh, hopefully, you know, the, 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 the gig bone is connected to the stage bone. I don't know. I don't yeah. know where I was going with that, but you know what I mean? As soon as you walk on, you know, you remember, I suppose. Hopefully. I think it'll all just come back as if yeah. you never left. But I mean, how have you used the time the last year and a half? Have you been kind of writing music? Are you recording? Or did you just literally say, do you know what? It's a good time to take a break. What did you do? Um, well, after the initial panic of what was going to happen, you know, I suppose uh, my brain got bored with being uh, being freaked out about whether or not there was going to be anything to do. And I just sort of kind of... I, I started doing other things. I mean, I started, started writing the musical. I started writing lots of songs it's hard so i'm not i wouldn't be the most prolific like i write a lot of stuff but i wouldn't sit down to write i just write a lot of stuff randomly you know i take a couple of days and don't stop writing for a couple of days but this year i kind of just sat down every day for a while and just kind of tried to write or you know whatever something i've never done in my life you know probably should have figured that one out years ago but and it, um so yeah it's been after the after the initial kind of um fear factor i suppose it was a it was a great year for for you know doing something you never would have given yourself the time to do i suppose yeah and i, I mean we've all had a year off you know yeah <laughs> you know, really. and you probably haven't had that much time off before in in how many years you've been on the scene has it you know yeah i mean so. technically my life has been a, a holiday you know but it's it's weird how you don't give yourself that time or something you know because you're thinking about the next gig or you're thinking about the next thing you're doing i suppose and this is like well you have no choice yeah you know? no. yeah talk to me about uh your gig by the way which is the 28th of august uh, which is only about four or five weeks away from now so yeah uh, it's, a me have... it's mental the amount of gigs that i think september and every 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 dog in ireland is going to be playing a gig you know i know it's it's, it's, it's it's fantastic and of course all thanks to the uh, department of culture for yeah. for being able to pump such joy into every musician in the country's <laughs> life i think it's fantastic uh have you been doing kind of the the live streams have you been doing the home gigs and all that kind of stuff no i stayed away from them i mean i i did a couple for charity at the start of it and i mean i didn't hate them but i didn't it it's not the same and you don't i mean you don't get the same feeling i mean what i love about and this is going to sound corny but for me the gig is the feeling and the you know what you get from the gig, from interacting with people. And I suppose it's that, it's like a date nearly, you know, it's kind of, mm -hmm. you don't know how it's going to go at the beginning, you know? So you're missing I, the energy aspect of everything. So like yeah, you know, the, the, the vibe of the audience and everything. The smell of fear from the audience, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, no, I, so yeah, I, yeah I, it's, you can't replace it with a, a camera, I suppose. And you're kind of singing into the abyss and I know people are typing to you, but it's kind of, I mean, that, that helps a little bit, but it's not really, it doesn't. So look, I don't know what I'm complaining about. I just, it, for me, it didn't feel amazing to do the online thing. So I didn't, I did a couple of them. I did one, but it was just sporadic. Oh, not sporadic. What's the word? On the, off, off the cuff with my daughter. And that was great fun. I think because we didn't care. We just had to crack for an hour, you know. Tell me about your daughter, because I've seen you before and she was supporting you. So. What's it been like for her to grow up listening to you and then to, you know, eventually start playing with you and, and doing actual gigs with you? That must be a lovely feeling to be able to yeah. go on stage <laughs> together. I don't know. To be honest, I mean, I don't think anyone wants to be doing gigs with their dad, in fairness. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, she's she's cool as in she's, you know, she doesn't act like she's too cool to hang out with me, I suppose, which, you know, which is great. Yeah. Which, which is weird for dads, I suppose. But yeah. Uh, I mean, she's actually, she's playing some piano with me as well for some of these gigs. And because it was a lockdown thing, I mean, we did have a couple of gigs last year. And because we we're in the house together, she learned the parts for my songs and stuff. And, you know, we did those gigs. And so she's going to come and do some of these and hopefully play a song or two in the middle of them. Yeah. I mean, she put her out her album last year and that, that was brutal because she didn't get to tour properly or whatever, you know, so that was, I mean, the same as a lot of kids putting out the first records. I don't say kids, but that's. 
You know what I mean. Yo younger, 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 younger generations. Uh, yeah. She's playing with you and Killarney, is she? She's going to play some keyboards and uh, she might sing sing a bit as well, if I can persuade her. So. Yeah, I want to talk to you. When, um, when it all kicked off for you, I remember, uh, I don't know how many years it was, when Saints and Sinners came out. I remember being a yeah. kid myself and I remember listening to Today FM at the time and I think Ray Darcy was on at the time and he was playing you and then all of a sudden we, we heard you everywhere and uh, how long ago was that and uh, what's it like looking um, back that's on a that? a while now? ago. What are yeah. you trying to do? <laughs> I, I'm just putting you know, things um, into perspective. <laughs> that was, I think, Six and Sinners was 2003, so that's a yeah. while ago. Holy shit. Excuse yeah. me. <laughs> yeah. Are you, that's you a while. Yeah, I don't even okay. think about that. Um, actually, you just made me think about how long it was. But yeah, that's 17 years ago. 17 years ago yeah I, so i would have been 10 i think at the time but it's yeah. it's a it's a memory i i still I have was only 10 day. at the time myself so. you were i know you were i i've i've aged very slowly but <laughs> but uh what's it like uh looking back i remember seeing you all like 17 years ago uh in the inec yeah and uh you know what's it like looking back at those memories when i suppose there was a uh, there was little worries at the time of of live gigs and live, live music um come into a, a standstill like so what's it like you know looking back i suppose on that time of your life um i'm not that nostalgic to be honest with you um i love i i mean those gigs were amazing they were very big big gigantic gigs and i, I mean for me i know this sounds ridiculous but I, I think i was incredibly shy at the time and i found it hard to reconcile all those people staring at me and I'm wondering why they were actually there. I know this sounds mental, but this is the truth, you know, and kind of trying to figure out why they were there and, you know, what they were seeing or, you know, what they were getting out of or whatever. And then um, I think um, I would probably have way more crack now than I did. I mean, I think the gigs were fun. As far as I remember, the crowd enjoyed them and I enjoyed them, but I think I'd have way more crack now uh, than I would have back then, I suppose. But yeah, uh, I love, I mean, the gigs are smaller now. I mean, there's less crowds wherever, but I think I'm better at just chatting now than I used to be. I think I've gotten less shy on stage maybe or something, you know? So mm -hmm. I don't uh, know if that's old age or just practice it's, maybe. It's just, I suppose, uh, just moving on with life, I suppose, and just realizing yeah. You don't care what anybody thinks anymore. Could be, could be, could be. <laughs> there's a bit of that, yeah. But uh, talk I mean, you have to try and do that in your life, otherwise you're in a, you know, in a, yeah. in a box really. Aren't you? Well, they say that happens to everybody as they grow older, that they just kind of learn to not really give a a, a toot about what most people think about them. And uh, it just, I think that's the key to a, a happy life, really. Yeah, I mean, for me, it was just, it was just a mad time. I mean, I couldn't, I just, I just didn't understand why people kept coming to the gigs. It yeah. just made no sense to me. And I know that sounds stupid, but... It's, yeah. you know, I, I was in it hoping that people would come to the gigs, but when they did actually come, I was like, why are you here? Yeah, you know? yeah. Well, actually, Stop. to be honest, um, uh, you know, I think 99% of the time, the gigs were amazing, you know, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, talk about the connection. I missed with... the big gig gigs a little bit, but I think it was more, and we were, you know, touring with the band all the time, and there was like a big gang of us going around the gigs, and that was, you know, that was different. Yeah. So, Talk to me about your connection with, with Killarney because you've obviously played here a lot over the years. Uh, but even before Living came out, you were doing a lot of busking and things around the place, weren't you? Well, Killarney was one of the first places, I mean, where I got, I suppose, a crowd that, you know, that wanted to see me, I suppose. Like, I mean, I was, I don't know, it was like 18 or 19, maybe, maybe a little bit older, 20. I had some friends down there. I mean, um, they were running a gig in the Strawberry Tree, which I don't think exists anymore. No, I but don't think it was so. an amazing thing. I mean, they had like David Gray down. They had Glenn Hanser down. Monday did it. Like we all did it. We all came down. I mean, them guys were bigger than me at the time, or whatever. But I still are. Like, but um, yeah. So we used to come down, and and I just started hanging around in Killarney and. I don't know, we'd just go and play music every night somewhere. Or we'd, and uh, I loved it. I mean, I lived down in Kerry for a good while. I mean, I lived in 
lived in at the back of Dingle in Ballyferter for a while, and you know, yeah. I used to come up to Killarney to do a gig. Or I, I, I really good friends. Uh, uh, one of the one of the lads that actually owns the I N E C was uh, used to come and play clarinet the other time at a gig. So I don't yeah, know. If yeah. you, you, uh, uh, you, you can say if he was good or bad. Was he was he all right? He was great. <laughs> yeah, was he? <laughs> it was John. It was John O'Dea. Anyway, he was great. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he was he, he was he was kind of shy, but he used to get up and do gates with us. But um, and then uh, Colm O'Sullivan. I don't know if you know Colm Brendan Colm O'Shea. Yeah. It was a little uh, uh, oh my God, Ian Whitty. Do you remember Ian? Do you know Ian? I think so. Like yeah, they yeah. all used to play these gigs, and they were amazing gigs. They were actually really, really. I don't know, some about the gigs just kind of kicked me into a new gear. Then it was the crowd that came and the way they loved music and the way they reacted mm-hmm. to the gig, you know. I mean, I had done the likes of Wheelands and stuff and I was only starting out to be honest, so I was only yeah. starting to get that feeling of people actually wanting to come to your gig, not to hear covers, but to hear, mm-hmm. you know, your music. Uh, what can we expect from the from the new album coming out on the sixth of August? Um well I mean it's uh it's the biggest one I've done. It's definitely, it's it's a two-sided thing. There's like one side is like a full-on band thing with you know synths and and orchestras and whatever, and and the other side is more laid back. It's got you know guitars and piano and a little bit of strings and cellos or whatever you know. Um, I mean, I think it's great. You know, for me it's great. I don't know if it was great because I'd made it myself or, or there's actually really good songs on it, but I think there's, it's a, uh, I mean, I'm nervous as well about that. I think it's, it's been a while since I put out, put out an album, which is probably why I, I left it as a double album because it's been so long. I thought, you know, I owed a few more songs than just one, you know, yeah. it's a weird time to do our records anyway, because people aren't really buying albums anyway, you know, you might yeah. sell them at gigs usually, you know. Yeah, but, uh, and, th- and then when there's no gigs either happening, it's it's kind of harder oh, yeah. to, They're just... to do it. We're looking forward to uh, to hearing live music again uh, from yourself and from all the other acts that are playing with us over the uh, uh, August and September. And um, we look forward to seeing you the 28th of August. And uh, will you bring down a few copies of your new album so we can... Uh, you can uh, I hope uh, so, yeah. I mean, I hope they're delivered by then, but I should have the CDs anyway. I, I've yeah. gone for vinyl this time, so... Oh, nice, nice. Well, uh, bring, yeah. bring a couple down with you. We, we'll set up a little Great area much. down the back. It'll be nice to be able to sell <laughs> albums to human beings again. <laughs> I've forgotten how to talk to humans. It's been so long. Yeah, yeah. But um, lovely to talk to you again, Andy. We'll see you on the 28th of August in the uh, INEC Inside Out stage. Uh, so, Paddy Casey, thank you very much. All right, cheers, Carl. Thank you.